Hello, how is it going? My name is Otto and welcome to the channel. Today we are comparing the DJI OM4 with the Aoshuan Smart XR. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I never heard about this brand before until some viewers did mention it on a few videos. I thought about giving it a try, so I requested a sample unit directly to the manufacturing company so I could try it out myself but they have no say on this video and everything said on this video is my own opinion. First, let's talk about the price. It is $149 for the DJI OM4 versus around $109 for the Aoshuan Smart XR, but I've seen this device go down to around $90 on Amazon and on their official website, they usually have different promotions. They both come with a tripod, a pouch, a grip strap, and a charging cable. The Aoshuan Smart XR is lightweight at only 430 grams with the tripod, and the OM4 weighs around 490 grams also with the tripod. Both gimbals can support pretty heavy phones. The Smart XR up to 250 grams, and the OM4 up to 290 grams. The OM4 has an internal battery that runs for around 15 hours, while the Smart XR has a battery that offers around 8 hours of operation. The good thing about the Smart XR is that you can remove the battery and replace it with another one. The downside is that right now Amazon doesn't sell them and Aoshuan are not selling them on their website either. If you buy this gimbal from them, you will get an extra battery, but I'm not sure if this is a limited promotion or if it's something more permanent. The OM4 can be used as a power bank to charge your smartphone with a simple USB cable. And usually other smartphone gimbals don't offer these kind of features, but the Smart XR does have it. The only weird thing about it is that it uses a micro USB port instead of a regular size USB or a USB-C port. And the problem with this is that it doesn't come with this kind of cable and they are not very common. Setting up and balancing both gimbals is quite easy, but the OM4 has this magnetic clamp that you place on the phone, just like this, and it can stay there. And when you need to use the gimbal, all you have to do is this. When you're done or when you need to use the phone, all you have to do is take it out like this. This is something that I personally like a lot since it makes it very easy to set up and balance at the same time. With the Smart XR, I had a small problem when I was using a bigger smartphone. I have the Samsung S21 Plus, and when balanced correctly, it would hit one of the corners on the gimbal. To avoid this, what I had to do was to push the smartphone to my left, like this, and now it's not perfectly balanced, but it's not going to hit the arm. Both gimbals have three axes, which have a big advantage over two axis gimbals. The buttons and the joystick on both gimbals feel really good. You can start and stop recording a video, recenter the gimbal, switch to horizontal or vertical mode with the buttons. Build quality is very good on both gimbals. They both have some rubber material on their handles and they feel good when I use them. But I like the ergonomics on the OM4 more than on the Smart XR. It fits really good on the hand and when I hold it, I can see and access all the controls with my fingers without any issues. Both gimbals have a zoom slider on the left side. The one on the OM4 feels easier to use and the slider on the Smart XR feels less fluid. What I do like about the Smart XR is this big wheel that it has on the left side. It can be customized to control different settings like the ISO, the white balance, or the exposure value. But the default use for this wheel is actually to manually focus. It works on iPhone and on Android, and it works really well. You actually can do that with the OM4. Something else that I do like a lot about the SmartXR is this OLED screen that it has. 
It is very simple, but it lets you know the battery power, the Bluetooth status, and most importantly, it lets you know on what gimbal mode you are, which leads me to the next part. Both gimbals offer four modes. They have follow mode, which unlocks the pan and tilt, pan follow, which unlocks the pan axis, but locks the tilt axis, all lock, which locks every axis, and POV or FPV, where every axis are going to be unlocked. On the OM4, to change most of the modes, you need to go into the app menus and select the mode that you want to use. The Smart XR has an easier way to access the modes. You can do it on their app, which for me, it's just fine. So on the gimbal, you press the joystick to change the different modes. On the OM4, you can set the M button to quickly access the menu and change the gimbal modes by using the joystick. But this is only available when using the MIMO app and not when you're using the native camera app or any other camera app. On the OM4, you can lock all access without going into the menus by pressing this trigger over here. But you actually need to press and hold it for this to be active. If you let go of the trigger, it goes back to whatever mode you had before. If you need to do fast movements, both gimbals offer a similar function. The OM4 has a sport mode that you can turn on inside the menu, or you can also use it with the trigger. On the Smart XR, you need to press and hold the joystick to activate this mode. They both work really well, and I have no complaints here. Anders Long Mode works on both gimbals without issues. All you need to do is flip the gimbal upside down and the camera will automatically get into the right position, allowing you to take shots closer to the ground. Both gimbals have the ability to go into inception mode. With the OM4, you have to select it on the menu and then manually spin it with the joystick. And because of this, you can spin the smartphone in any direction that you want. On the Smart XR, the inception mode can be accessed by triple tapping the joystick or inside the app's menus and it will start making the spin movement but it will always rotate on the same direction. The OM4 will go all the way close to 230 degrees and the Smart XR will not go over 180 degrees. Both apps have nice features and lots of customizations. I do like the fact that the Smart XR allows you to customize the gimbal speed as well as the joystick speed. I just wish that you could adjust the gimbal to go even slower. The Smart XR has all the basic features that you would expect to find, such as slow motion, time lapse, motion lapse, photo mode, four different panorama shots, video mode, and it also offers dolly zoom and inception mode. The Smart XR also has an easy to use live video that can be used with popular apps such as YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook, but it's not limited to those apps. The good thing about having this is that with whatever app you use, the Smart XR will keep tracking you. Just a quick warning, if you're too close to the camera, the tracking is going to go a little bit crazy and sometimes it's not so consistent. I found that the best distance is to be at about three feet away from the camera, but even so, sometimes it goes kind of wonky. The other cool thing that this gimbal has, it's called multi-lens shooting. You can select different frames per second and you can select two modes, which are picture in picture or split screen. But the downside is that this seems to be available only for iPhone as I was not able to get it to work with my S21 Plus. On the OM4, you also get slow motion, time lapses, motion lapses, video mode, photo mode, dynamic zoom, which is the same as the dolly zoom, and you also get a bunch of customizable templates to make quick videos inside of what they call story mode. The Smart XR doesn't have this kind of templates, but it offers around 364 different filters inside the app. The OM4 also offers a hyperlapse, two different panorama shots, and something called clone panorama shots, which is very fun to use. Autofocus and exposure lock works well on both apps, and both devices offer object and face tracking. I like the Smart XR tracking. If you go out of the frame and come back again, the tracking will keep going. If the OM4 doesn't see you anymore, it will lose you completely, even if you come back to the frame. If you have an Android, you have to know that inside of the app, 
the OM4 will only shoot at 30 frames per second. And inside the app of the Smart XR, you can shoot at 24 or 30 frames per second. No 60 frames per second yet, so we'll see what happens in the future. If you have an iPhone, you're not gonna have any problems shooting at 24, 30 or 60 frames per second on either gimbal. There are many things that I actually like about the OM4. The handle, the app, the magnetic clamp that I just keep talking about every single time that I talk about this gimbal. But this guy over here, this gimbal has a lot of potential. It is one of the best smartphone gimbals that I have used in a while. It has features that are hard to find on other smartphone gimbals, like the focusing wheel, the removable battery, and the little screen that it has on the front. I mean, I think this gimbal is on the right track. I think it feels good for the $100 price range, so I do recommend to get this gimbal if you want a little bit more than what other smartphone gimbals are offering. Just remember that I'm not saying that this is perfect. It's good, but it's not perfect. I hope that you got some value out of this video. Now it's time to say goodbye, but I do hope to see you in the next one. Take care and have a good one. Bye.